Before our worship message, I just want to point out something I've, I've never said in this congregation before. The word hallelujah is one of the very few words that virtually everybody on the planet knows. Uh, it's just not Jews and Christians that know that word. It's everybody on the planet knows what that word means. Isn't that interesting? Praising God is one of the few words that almost everybody on this planet knows. If you take your scripture, no greater love than this from John chapter 15. And we're gonna study Jesus' words about love. Imagine that, your pastor talking about love <laughs> every single Sunday. These are Jesus' words. Live in me and make your home, and I would say your true home, in me, just as I do in you. You are the true home for Jesus' spirit. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and me with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. This is why I encourage everyone to have morning devotions. Every morning, it, they don't have to be half an hour, an hour long, but every morning, say, God, dwell in me. I know you're my true home. And what that does is that hallelujah, that praising God, that dwell with me, connects you to the vine and you will bear fruit. You will bear fruit automatically uh, because you know, plants need to be watered on a regular basis. And we need to have our souls watered by staying connected to the true vine. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of churches named True Vine Baptist Church, True Vine Christian Church after this, after this passage. Separated, Jesus said, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. There's a lot of grapes, uh, na native grapes, that live in our forests in eastern Kansas. And uh, right now at our home by Banner Creek Lake, there's one grape that has taken over a thorn tree. <laughs> And uh, I've had to trim it several times. That, that, and of course, when I cut that grapevine off, it dies. And then I have to burn it with all the other branches that fall down. But connected, uh, that some of the bases of these wild grapes are this big around. Just huge. And m many people that don't live in the country, they don't understand wild grapes are very prolific if they remain connected to the vine. And so it's real important that you and I are constantly connected to the vine. And, and Jesus said, if you're connected to me and my words and they're at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be done. This is how my Father shows you who he is. This is, in other words, Jesus is saying, this is what God is like. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples, this is gonna happen. I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Uh, one of the things I found myself saying to my granddaughter is, I love you. And it's been years since Katie was just a little girl in our house and, and loving 
your children and your grandchildren. It just, it just comes naturally. Loving God, the hallelujahs, the thank you gods, just come naturally. And Jesus said, uh, talking, this whole thing is about our true home. He said, make yourself at home in my love. There's something inside each one of us that wants to be in our true home. And no parent is perfect, but when we're growing up, if we have moms and dads that really love us, we feel at home. And it's not just a house or a cottage. When we're loved, we feel at home. One of the great things about serving as pastor in this congregation, because you love God, the God of Jesus Christ, I feel at home where that is proclaimed. There are a lot of other things that some churches talk about other than, like our elder did in a prayer today, personally accepting Jesus Christ. There's a lot of other things we can talk about, but the core of personally accepting Jesus Christ makes us feel at home with everyone else who has personally accepted Jesus Christ and they're trying to follow him every day. And really, this is the home that we really long for. There's times I miss the home I grew up in, the physical home in the National Forest. And I miss the river that went through by our home. But I know that my true home is not there. My, my prayer for you is that you'll have a vision, a wonderful vision of your true home, of being with God and being with other believers and saying hallelujahs, that you'll be like this beautiful picture of the waterfalls in Croatia. There'll be beauty there. You'll feel at home there. And you know, uh, there's a number of reports of people that have gone to heaven and they didn't want to come back and God has said, your mission in life is not over yet. You, you gotta come back to earth. And they'll say, it was so beautiful in heaven, so peaceful, so brilliantly bright. I didn't want to come back, but God told me I still had a purpose and meaning in life. I, I personally know several people that that's happened to, and if you read the literature, uh, Christian literature, you'll see that that has happened to more than one person. But Jesus said, if you obey my commands, you'll be intimately connected with your true home, which is wherever Jesus is, is our true home. And Jesus goes on to explain, that's why I've kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. Jesus was a human being. And he, as a human being, he tried to keep God's commands. And even here on earth, Jesus was at home in God's love. You and I as human beings, even in this earth, we can be at home in God's love. And that's such a wonderful thing. He says, I told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be in you and that your joy may be wholly mature. I wish you could have heard Friday night in this building. Wonderful story of a person basically coming back from the dead and becoming alive with God's love. And now they want to go and reach out and help other people. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you know, this is exactly what Jesus said. This is my command. Love one another the way I have loved you. Now, uh, in a normal household with several different children, there's a lot of what's called sibling rivalry. <laughs> Sometimes the older daughter lords it over everybody, or the older 
son lords at everybody in the house. But, uh, you know, you love your brothers and sisters, even if sometimes they're sort of hard on you. But uh, in the ideal home, there's not a lot of sibling rivalry. Mom and dad will see that one kid is being a little too hard on brothers and sisters and will say, they'll take him aside and they say, Johnny, now Susan, sort of back off and treat your brother better. <laughs> treat your sister better. But loving one another the way Jesus loves you and me is, is really the secret to living at home here on this earth and, and living at home in heaven. And Jesus goes on f further. He said, you are my friends when you do the things that I command you. Being a friend with God sounds a little presumptuous, doesn't it? It sounds a little, uh, oh, you're trying to go on an ego trip. <laughs> no, these are Jesus' words. You're friends with me when you do the things I command you. Uh, I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I call you friends because I let you in on everything I heard from the Father. I would encourage you every day to be open to God directing you in every aspect of your life. No matter who shows up or what happens, ask yourself, God, what am I supposed to do with, in this situation as I make this decision, as I, as I live my life? Uh, and you know, one of the things I'm learning, even though I've been a Christian for a number of years, I try to go with the flow of what is happening in my life, knowing that nothing is by chance. And knowing that whatever shows up, God can use that to help me be a better person. And so, you know, it's very important. It's, it's okay to have plans at the beginning of the day. Uh, at this memorial service, things popped up with my friend Debbie's memorial service that I had no idea it would happen. But rather than getting agitated, you know, I tried to say, okay, God, now where are you in this? And it's, it's a wonderful way to live. Uh, I don't always pull it off totally like I should, but I'm, I'm getting better at it, you know. No matter what happens in my schedule, I just go with the flow of life. Our society teaches us to try to control everything. Uh, I get a lot of people in my clinic and they'll say, well, what do I say to so-and-so to change him? <laughs> and I said, you don't say anything to so-and-so to change him. You change yourself. You change yourself. And of course, you've got to give kids guidance when they're growing up. But I'm talking about changing adolescence that you did your best to raise. I'm talking about changing your spouse, changing your people at work, changing the people in your neighborhood. Give that up. Change yourself and really try to be full of God's love. Try to listen to the Holy Spirit and you'll be in your true home here on earth, which is being guided by the Holy Spirit. It's amazing what just one person can do to change the spiritual atmosphere around you. And none of us do this perfectly. God is not into perfect. God is into you growing and me growing better and closer to the Holy Spirit and to his love, every single thing. And, and God, Jesus says God calls us friends. Jesus calls us friends. And he said, you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. You know, I wish it, we could buy stuff like that, don't you? <laughs> uh, if I don't eat my avocados, they spoil. <laughs> There's an orange I had to throw away. I was glad to see Kathleen cut it in half and put it out for the, the birds. Because <laughs> it was, when an orange gets crusty, <laughs> you don't want to eat it. <laughs> 
But those birds will eat anything if they're hungry, you know. But uh, this is fruit that won't spoil. Uh, you know, right now, as we study Jesus' words, you and I are being watered. The vine is nourishing us. And uh, you won't spoil. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story I've never mentioned in, in church before. When the Islamic people conquered uh, the Balkans, there was one saint that was sort of a, to the Roman Catholic and the Serbian Orthodox Christians, there was one saint's body that had been a tremendous follower of Jesus. And his, his body was not decaying. And he, you know, in the Catholic and the Orthodox tradition, that, uh, that became a, a, sort of a miracle, you know. And so many Christians were flocking to this one uh, area where his, his body lay and the saint was not decaying that the Islamic people burned the saint's body because <laughs> it, it was too much like bringing people to Jesus. And, of course, they were against Jesus when the Ottoman Turks took over the Balkans. And that happens very rarely, you know. But you and I will be fruit that won't spoil. We don't even have to be refrigerated. Although this winter I was wondering sometimes if I was being refrigerated. <laughs> but you won't spoil. Uh, Debbie, hug. Her Christian testimony and her joy and her love, she had a lot of hard things going on in her life. I've known her, you know, 40 years, 50 years. Her love for other people and her laughter, that's not going to spoil because she was a follower of Jesus. So, the last sentence in this passage in John 15 is, Jesus said, As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, the Father will give you. But remember, the root command, the basic command, is to love one another. Jesus doesn't tell us to like one another. He tells us to love one another. And as we were talking in Sunday school class this morning, when you love other people, when you love other people, you'll start to love yourself. When you forgive other people, you will start to forgive yourself. So right now, go through the list of, of people in your thoughts that you have a hard time loving. The root command is to love one another. The foundational command, Jesus says here in John 15, is to love other people. And that's not necessarily Christians either. Love other people, period. It especially applies to the disciples and other Christians, but it also applies to everybody else. Now, God doesn't tell us to like him. And again, I'm going to say something. I probably said this before, but not very often. There's still two people alive that want to kill me. Uh, that's because they're not following God. But uh, one of them I had to call the sheriff on, say, hey, this guy threatened to kill me. <laughs> I love them both. I pray for them both. I don't like them. It's, it's not cool to have people threaten to kill you. But I love them. I've forgiven them. And when you love, you know, John Wesley most Methodists don't know this. He had people try to kill him because he was going to poor people and he wasn't obeying the religious structure of England at the time. Uh, virtually everybody who follows Jesus, like John Wesley, at the very least, uh, people are going to threaten to kill him. But, you know, John Wesley forgave everybody. Jesus forgave everybody. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. He blessed people that were murdering him on the cross. And it wasn't the Romans doing it. It was the religious leaders. It wasn't even the Jews doing it. All the Jews knew he was a great prophet. It was the people in power. They didn't want to lose their power. They didn't want to lose the money in the temple. They were the ones. And he forgave them too. And... Uh, 
Paul of Tarsus is a classic example. Paul was murdering Christians. He was arresting Christians. And Jesus grabbed Paul on the road to Damascus and said, you're going to be one of my greatest followers. And Paul immediately went blind. He went to Damascus. And God spoke to a Christian in Damascus, says, I want you to go pray for Paul. And that Christian in Damascus said, are you crazy, God? <laughs> He's killing Christians. Do you want me to go pray for him? And God said to that wonderful disciple who obeyed God in Damascus, he said, I'm going to use him. He's going to be a great tool for leading people to faith in me. If it wasn't for that one Christian going to Paul and saying, Brother Paul, God has told me to pray for you. And when that man prayed for Paul, scales fell off his eyes and he could see again. And my prayer is that as we study this scripture together, scales will fall off my eyes. Scales will fall off your eyes and that you'll be able to love God personally, to ask him into your life, to pray for even your enemies, and to be full of hallelujahs. It wasn't by chance that hallelujah appeared on our screen today. No matter what's going on in your life, you can live hallelujahs, you can live praises to God and you can be full of love. This is your true home. And the root commandment, the key to unlock the door to your true home, Jesus said the foundational commandment is to love one another. Amen.